Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. One question that I get every single day and probably multiple times per day on all of the platforms that I show up on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, everywhere, is this question. Are your exercises good for me and would your Missing Link program be good for me if I don't have multiple sclerosis? I have people writing to me asking this question who have had a stroke in the past, who have fibromyalgia, who have rheumatoid arthritis, ataxia, hereditary spastic paraplegia, Parkinson's, a spinal cord injury, neuromyelitis optica, transverse myelitis, and so many others. And their question is, is everything you preach functional exercise, neuroplasticity, are the exercises that you have in The Missing Link and that you show us on all these platforms, will they work for me? And this is a really great question because it is important that you have belief that what you're doing actually can help you because if you don't have belief that what you're doing can help you, you're not going to stay consistent with those exercises long enough to actually reap the benefits. And when you have a diagnosis like MS or like any of the others that I just mentioned, it takes a long time. It takes longer than someone who doesn't have that diagnosis. So I'm going to answer that question and then I'm going to say why that is my answer. So first and foremost, Yes, my program, The Missing Link, my exercises, my strategies, my techniques are helpful regardless of if you have MS or a different type of neurological or neuromuscular disease. And the reason for that is because the principle behind everything I do is neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity occurs in every single person, whether you have a neuromuscular disease, neuro disease of any kind or not. It occurs in everyone, but especially if you have a neurological neuromuscular disease, it especially works for you. It takes a bit longer, but it does happen. And neuroplasticity is the reason that people can go from having weakness and difficulty balancing and poor mobility and spasticity and all of these symptoms due to their neural pathways misfiring, demyelination, something going on with the neurological system. It's the reason that you actually can get stronger, get better balance, walk better, and see real improvements. Now, of course, I am a multiple sclerosis certified specialist, so everything that I talk about is having to do in some way, shape, or form with MS. But when we take MS out of the equation, truth be told, MS is a neurological and neuromuscular disease, just like these other ones that I've mentioned. And I'm sure I'm missing a bunch too. And the real thing that you need to focus on when you have a neuromuscular disease is neuroplasticity-based exercises because that will focus not just on strengthening your muscles, but strengthening your neural pathways. So I speak to a lot of support groups and MS organizations about neuroplasticity. And there's this one slide that I share that I absolutely love. It has three images, and it's basically the three steps to make a muscle work. And a muscle working can be anything from picking up a glass of water to taking a step forward or many steps forward. And step number one is a picture of your brain, meaning that the first step is that you have to have the awareness, the thought or a reflex of what you want to happen. So for example, if I wanna pick up my cup of tea, I need to be able to have the thought of extend my arm and pick up this cup of tea. Or if I wanna take a step forward, I have to have the thought of take a step forward. Or it needs to be a reflex, like I'm I'm touching something hot, the reflex says to lift my hand. So the first step is your brain. It either has to be an active thought or it has to be a reflex. 
Then the second photo is a photo of a neural pathway, which basically means that once you have that thought or that reflex, the next step is that message of lift your leg or bend your elbow, pick up that T. The next step is that that message needs to be delivered to your muscle. So there's tons of neural pathways that lead from your brain to the muscle that needs to activate. So step number two, is is those neural pathways and connecting those neural pathways so that the message that your brain has gets all the way to the muscle. And then the third picture is a picture of the Hulk, which basically just resembles that's when your muscles get to fire. And what's different about neuroplasticity-based exercises is that the goal is not necessarily to strengthen your muscles. And that might sound odd if this is the first time you're hearing about neuroplasticity, but a lot of physical therapists, especially orthopedic physical therapists, and a lot of personal trainers focus on strengthening your muscles. And that might sound like a good thing because we want our muscles to be stronger, but It's so important to realize and understand why your muscles are weak in the first place. And when you have MS, when you've had a stroke, when you have Parkinson's or NMO or transverse myelitis, when you have a neuromuscular and neurological disease, the issue is not on the muscular level. The issue is at the neurological level, that neural pathway, those neural connections, which is step number two of three. So do we want your muscles to be stronger? Yes, but the way to get them to be stronger, truly stronger, is not just to focus on strengthening your muscles. First, you have to focus on strengthening the neural pathways. And there's two ways that this can happen. The first way is that your neural pathways are strengthened because they're already working. They've just been weakened due to your neuromuscular disease. The second way that this can work is by finding a completely new neural pathway because your current neural pathway is not working at all all and therefore you need to find a brand new neural pathway and the cool thing is that that's possible does it take longer absolutely but is it possible absolutely one really cool thing that happened to me as i became certified in treating people with multiple sclerosis is that neurologists in the area heard about me they heard i was going through this training and so i started seeing a lot of patients not only with ms but with other neurological diagnoses and so i have experienced treating a lot of these neurological and neuromuscular diagnoses and i can share with you that i have seen similar progress in my clients with ms as my clients with transverse myelitis or NMO or stroke. Now they all take a different amount of time to see those improvements and the strategies might be slightly different, but at the end of the day, we focused on neuroplasticity exercises and that is what was able to get them to stand for a longer amount of time or stand at all, take more steps, have better posture in sitting and in standing, reducing pain, improving core strength, improving sensation. There's so many different areas that we can work on and neuroplasticity exercises are the way to get it done when you have something going on with your neurological system. I have several Missing Link podcast episodes where I talk about neuroplasticity because this topic is that important And you'll find episodes number three and 39 helpful in understanding the basics around neuroplasticity, like what is it and how does it work? Episode number 96 talks about how long neuroplasticity will take. And everything that I mentioned in that episode 96 is true for someone with MS, as well as another neuromuscular or neurological disease. And episode 99 is a trick of the trade to get neuroplasticity to work a little bit faster because neuroplasticity can take a long time. You could start to see benefits in anywhere from three months, as little as three months, all the way up to two years. So it's really important that you understand what it is. You're doing what you need to do to see results. 
And those episodes in particular will give you everything that you need to know about it if we didn't answer already in this episode. The number one way to know if these types of exercises are going to work for you and your condition, whether you have a condition that I mentioned or something else, is to give it a try, especially if you have not done neuroplasticity-specific exercises before. I can't tell you how often I used to hear, oh, I've been to physical therapy and it didn't work for me. And I would ask them, well, what did you do in physical therapy? Or they'd say, oh, I've been to a personal trainer. Exercise didn't help. And I would say, well, what did you do with your personal trainer? And everything they did was focused more on the muscle, not the neural pathway. And so as soon as we discussed neuroplasticity, they were a little bit more bought into the fact that this might work for them. They stayed consistent and they were able to see results. So if you are hesitant, if you feel unsure, my first question for you would be, have you tried neuroplasticity exercises before? If yes, and you didn't see any improvement, it might mean modifying it to work better for where you're at currently and or doing it longer, staying consistent for a year, a year and a half, two years. It can take that long to see results sometimes. And if your answer is no, that no, you haven't tried neuroplasticity exercises, well, then you've got nothing to lose. They are different. Some of the exercises are different, but the parameters are definitely different than your general strengthening exercises. So give it a try. And I have lots of resources as you hopefully know, to help you dip your toes in the water of neuroplasticity. There's two great places that I would have you start. First and foremost is my personal favorite, which is my five-day MS Strength Challenge. So I know that it says MS in the name. That's because I'm an MS specialist and I focus on multiple sclerosis. But as you hopefully know, lots and lots of diagnoses can benefit from MS-specific exercises. And so my five-day MS Strength Challenge reviews what neuroplasticity is In addition to lots of different exercise examples, we talk about exercise parameters on how you can implement it into your day in life, how to stay consistent, accountability, you name it. So it's a five-day challenge that you can start. I will put a link for that in the show notes in case you're interested in giving it a try. And it's so important that you do your best to follow one day right after the other. You will have lifetime access to it. And every now and then on day three, something happens or someone left town and they're unable to finish it. That's fine. You have lifetime access. So you can finish days four and five later on. But get in the habit of consistency. So there's day one through day five, stay consistent. And then there's a little something special for you at the end of day five. But there's also a full MS specific exercise class in the five day MS strength challenge. So it's a full exercise class that you can try to participate in and see how it goes. It's tons of neuroplasticity exercises all in one class. So again, I will put the link for that in the show notes. That would be my favorite place to start. I'm someone who likes challenges and I like that it's split up into five days because it's a little bit of information each day versus a lot all at once. However, if you like learning a lot all at once and if you have a goal of improving your walking, I have a free webinar that is all about MS specific walking. And just as I mentioned with the five day challenge, even though it's MS specific, everything that I mentioned in there will also help you if you have another neurological or neuromuscular disease or disorder. So that is a full webinar. It went for about an hour long. And then at the end, I spend about 10 minutes answering any further questions that those who hopped on live had for me. So that's a really great resource as well. Those are the two places that I would recommend starting first, the five-day MS strength challenge and or that walking webinar. So I will put links for both of those in the show notes so you can choose to do one or both. And from there, you'll start to implement some of these exercises that we're talking about that are focused on neuroplasticity. And you likely won't see improvements right away. 
although there is that potential, it might take a bit longer. So stay consistent. You'll get a sense of what they're like. And then from there, if you feel like, whoa, this is really eye-opening, this does feel different than something I've done in the past, then other options that might be better for you are my Total Core program, my Total Strength program, my full online MS wellness program, The Missing Link, you name it. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope this answered a lot of questions for you, especially especially if you are someone who doesn't have MS. I know that it can feel lonely if you don't know exactly what to be doing for your condition. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully this can give you a sense that there is something out there that can help you. You just got to find what it is and then stay consistent. 